it's time to take apart the Google Pixel 8 Pro. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter or X so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before taking the phone apart, I did a drop test. So if you're interested in seeing that, check out my recent videos or click on the link in the iCard on the top corner or in the description. So to start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. Once the adhesive underneath the screen has been pried off, the screen can be lifted from the right to the left. For some reason, prying this screen off was more difficult for me compared to the Pixel 8 because the plastic border underneath the screen separated from the back of the screen. So while I was running the pry pick around the screen, I accidentally slightly damaged the screen. So now there's a few lines running from the top to the bottom. Well, aside from that, once the screen has been separated from the frame, this metal clip or cover over the screen cable needs to be removed. Now the cable can be disconnected from the main board. Here's a look at the back of the screen. There's a copper tape behind the screen to help transfer heat. There's a cutout for the proximity and ambient light sensor. And the optical fingerprint reader is adhered to the back of the screen. There are now 13 T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. The 5G millimeter wave antenna flex cable can now be disconnected from the main board. Here's the 5G millimeter wave antenna. The graphite film which helps to transfer heat needs to be peeled off. This is more of a 3D graphite which is multiple layers of graphite. This is fairly thick compared to the Pixel 8. This is the aluminum mid plate, and there's a liquid damage indicator sticker on the bottom, which is that white sticker. Looking at the other side, we can see a thermal pad over here to help transfer heat away from the processor, and the linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor is located on the bottom. We now have access to disconnecting the battery cable. There is a pull tab provided to help you pry the battery off, but from my experience on these Pixel phones, these pull tabs don't really help much. Since the adhesive holding the battery down is strong, I'll need to apply some isopropyl alcohol to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off.
Here's a better look at the 5050 mAh battery. This is the 10.5 megapixel front facing camera with autofocus. A single T4 or Torx 4 screw needs to be removed, which is holding down the camera assembly. Taking a closer look, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera, the 48 megapixel ultra wide, and the 48 megapixel telephoto lens. The main camera and the telephoto lens are the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. This is the bottom speaker assembly and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening. There are three more T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. You'll need to pull out the two coaxial cables from the placeholder on the side of the frame. Here's a look at the top earpiece speaker, and there's a red rubber gasket around the opening. We can also see some of the sand around the rubber gasket from the durability and drop test video. The flex cable which is connected to the proximity sensor board on the bottom can be disconnected by lifting up the latch or connector on the back and then pulling out the cable. Looking at the main board, just like the Pixel 8 and previous generation Pixel phones, the charger port is soldered to the main board, so replacing that is going to be difficult. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port itself, and the primary microphone is located next to it. The SIM reader is located here, and there's some graphite film over this shield. Here's a look with the graphite film peeled back. Compared to the Pixel 8, instead of a thermal pad, there's a copper plate on top of the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. Now this actually looks to be a thick layer of copper tape, not a copper plate. And here's a look with that copper tape or copper plate removed. Looking at the back, we can see the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module, and some more graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Here's a better look at the ambient light sensor, the dual LED flash, as well as the temperature sensor or thermometer. This flex cable is for the NFC and wireless charging coil, and there's some more graphite film over that to help transfer heat, and the flex cable over here is for the power button and volume keys. If you need to replace those, you'd have to gently peel off the flex cable and lift out and pull out the metal brackets from inside the frame. There's also a secondary microphone by the top rim of the frame, and another one behind the camera bezel. Now when it comes to the back glass, it's just as hard to remove as the Pixel 8. It's glued strongly to the frame, so there's a high chance of damaging or breaking it, prying it off if it's even possible at all. As for the glass camera lens cover, that can be replaced by applying some heat and prying that off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. And this scored less than the Pixel 8, because prying the screen off was slightly more difficult than the Pixel 8. And based on the internal layout on the Pixel 8 Pro, it takes slightly more time to replace or remove parts inside the phone. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.